please welcome Tony Braxton to the show. We're here hey, for, sis, how you doing? I'm good, sis, and we're here for you. I know you hear the audience. Um, it's only been two weeks. Thank you for joining us. How are you holding up, Tony? Um, I, I thought I was doing okay until you started talking and it kind of took me there, but uh, I miss my sister so much every day. But um, I'm glad to be here and hang out with you and the wonderful fans and everyone in the audience. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me. Thanks, okay. guys. Tony, you shared such a beautiful tribute on social media about Tracy when she passed away. Um, you showed the snow was falling and you said, our angel is now a snowflake. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Tracy, I'm a rain girl. I love when it rains, but my sister Tracy, she loves when it snows and she died that morning when the, it was actually pouring down snow in Virginia. So my sister is now a snowflake. Um, and her favorite bird was a hummingbird. And I saw a hummingbird the other day. It just kind of flew around me and kind of suspended itself. And I was like, Tracy? And it started bumping and going up and down. So that made me feel so much better that she was like, I felt like she was trying to say hello to me. You know, that's a part of the grieving process. You have those memories and we still look for the signs um, to exactly. show that that loved one is still there. Um, yeah. You know, people are so surprised, whether you're a celebrity or not, age 50, I know that Tracy was a mom and a grandmom, and she yeah. chose to, to battle the cancer privately. Uh, Kevin Jr., her son, wrote that she fought oh, until yeah. the end. Um, what she was did. that? You said she's a bright light, and I watched her on the show. What was that year like for her, Tony, and, and for the family? It was a tough year. She was optimistic. She was hopeful that she was going to get better. Actually, she had a, a lot more time than they initially said. Um, she had another six months that she was with us. So we got to savor that moment with her and talk and laugh and giggle. And all my sisters and I and my parents, we all rallied together, my brother. And we were, we were in the D.C. area. And we were just there all the time, all the time with her. Um, so we got to see her take her last breath. Yeah, and that part was kind of hard, you know. Um, but I'm really excited about the project because even doing this project, um, Fallen Angels, my sister Tracy, I would talk to her every day a couple times a day. I was filming in Canada. And I would ask her about my character and talk to her about Hollis and read my lines with her and say, what do you think Hollis should be? You know, I think she should be less sexy. She's like, no, be sexy. Why not make her sexy? <laughs> so it was, it's a lot of fun. When I look yeah. at this project, I think of her with, with a smile on my yeah. face. Um, and I, we, we're going to dedicate this yeah. film, Lifetime and I, to my sister Tracy. So she will always be with us no matter what. I love that. I mean, <laughs> I think it is, it's so beautiful. First of all, I love always watching you and your family together, the, 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 the real arc of this family. And, of yeah. course, that, that matriarch that rules the roots, you know. And, yeah. <laughs> and to see you all as sisters, even the title of the show, Braxton Family Values, because the va yeah. it, it, I always love that title, Tony. And then as I got to know you, your sisters through the show and even personally with Tamar being here, just to see the specialness, yeah. I know, the specialness that you all share. We're so close. We're more than sisters. We're kind of like twins, I like yeah. to call it. You know, we're, we're bound together by more than just DNA, by blood. And it's just something special that my parents did such a fantastic job with raising all of us together, making us so close. And so to lose one um, makes it a little more difficult sometimes. It's, I wake up every morning and I go, oh, did I dream it? Did I dream it? And I have to remind myself, no, she's gone, but she's been here with us for 50 years. So I try to relish in that moment and I try to smile about it and just be grateful for the time you have. And you have to always remember to be kind to one another. We're sisters, so we're always going to fight. That's what sisters do, okay? It's the right to passage, to fuss and fight, but in the end, we're always there. We can be fussing and fighting with each other, even on the show, and we'd be right there. Okay, I'm bringing the kids over yeah. and not talk to each other, but we'll be cooking together. So it's just our right to passage as yeah. a family. That's what you do. But in the end, we were always together. We always loved each other. And we're just very fortunate to have had my sister with us for as long as we had. You talk about always being there for each other with her son, yeah. Kevin Jr., and now yeah. her grandson. Um, yes, I've he's always so seen you as this, you know, you are the glue, right? It, and, 
and, and in so many ways. How do you now step into this role of helping her son and her grandson remember uh, the beauty of her life that was too short? Yeah. Her and her son, they were so close. Her and her grandson and her, his, her son's wife, we were just a big family. We were all there. Her son was there. Her husband was there. Everyone was there. Her best friends were there, Tawana, Denise. Everyone was there with her. She had so much love. The hospice nurses were incredible. Um, you never think that it's going to um, happen to you and your family. So you have to remind yourself to enjoy the moments. Yeah. Be happy. And it's okay if you fuss and fight, but just enjoy the moments and try to just smile and be happy, be kind to one another. Yeah. And um, yeah. I'm, I'm okay. Today's okay. It's okay. It's not my best day, but it's an okay day, you know? And I'm happy that I'm here and I'm happy that I get to talk about it. And her birthday's coming up soon on the second. And my sisters and I, we're going to celebrate it and have a big Tracy Day thingy. So I'm excited about that. The producers and the director of the show, I mean, I mean, Brain Power, I should say, and the director of the show, Rhonda, are fantastic. They let me leave three days early when we were shooting the film because my sister was really ill towards the end, really, really ill. And um, they thought she wouldn't make it through, just, uh, through Thanksgiving. They thought she wouldn't make it through Christmas. They thought she wouldn't make it through the New Year. And she made it through March. So you have to celebrate, you know? Yes, Eat yes. the fish and throw away the bones. Yes. You have to be grateful for whatever I mean, you want. you are. Uh, let me just tell you, uh, you know I love you and I always have, but you are so resilient. And I have such deep admiration for you. Um, when we come back and talk about... Tony's own resilience in her life. She, by the way, is one of my mom goals. When I had my son, I always thought about Tony <laughs> and how she just has done so much, especially on behalf of children diagnosed with autism. More with Tony yeah. Braxton after the break and her new project and how she keeps going. The resilience of Tony Braxton. <laughs> we are back with the one and only Tony Braxton in a daytime exclusive interview following the heartbreaking death of her sister, Tracy, at the age of 50. I, you know, um, Tony, I know you're in that room with a couple of technical people. I'm in here with the audience and, you know, seeing their faces and, and, and knowing how they're there for you. We always say um, God doesn't put more on you than you can handle. And you yeah. have been so resilient, even when you talked about being diagnosed with your autoimmune disease and, and with your son, uh, when you came out, what was it, 15 years ago, uh, yeah. Diesel was three <laughs> years old and he uh, was diagnosed with autism. He is now at Howard University. Yes. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm so Tony, proud I remember it like yesterday when you were one of the very first celebrities to come out and talk about this and you said, I'm gonna do everything I can to get him the access and the things he needs. And oh. now he's at Howard. I mean, goodness. Yes, he's doing so great. He's modeling. He's a, a model for Diesel, him and my, his brother, Denim. Um, he's a student at Howard. He's majoring in um, drama. He was so excited to meet the Dr. Dean Felicia Rashad. He was so <laughs> excited about that. She's the dean of students. He's like, oh, mom, that show you used to watch. Listen to that. That show you used to watch. <laughs> the Cosby show, that lady. That's she's so like our amazing. dean. So he was so excited to meet her. And he's like, mom, she's so fantastic. So that was a great thing that just, you know, when you think of your children, because they bring you joy yeah. and you see them prosper in life. And he had that little deficit and just how he worked through it. And he understands it. He goes, you know, mom, I had autism. It doesn't have me. Yeah. And how he worked through it. And I always tell everyone, early diagnosis, thank you for I mean, is it surreal? Because obviously you are known for your legendary beauty and body and, of course, the voice. To be standing between those two handsome boys, it's like, wait a minute, I did this. These are my <laughs> babies. They're grown oh. men now. Man, I'm raising men. And, now, you know, the empty nest syndrome, that's real. At first, I, I, the first son, I was really, really distraught. I mean, I cried <laughs> all the way to him going to Arizona. Yeah. This was during the pandemic as well. But by the time Diesel went to Howard, I was like, yeah, I'm okay. I'm kind of <laughs> looking forward to walking around the house in my underwear. Okay. So, got... <laughs> You're like, these men are out of the house. I'm free to be me. Um, yes, yes, yes. You've also been open about, as I mentioned, your own health journey. Uh, it was in 2008 when you had to halt the residency and, and you talked about autoimmune disease, again, being so vulnerable. Um, what, because we have a choice um, to be private or to share these things, Tony. Why did yeah. you always choose to share them? 
I always chose to talk about them and share them because I can narrate my own story and no one else can speculate. Um, I can give them as many details as I want and that's my life, I control it. And that's the beauty of even what you've done. I mean, you, you continue, um, of course, to make music. What was it, two years? Was it two years ago when you just broke the internet, came out in the dress and performed <laughs> at one of the award shows and everyone's like, yes, really? AMAs. You're like, yes, the I AMAs. remember the AMAs. Um, yeah. and, but you've not <laughs> been shy in taking a break. In 2013, you said, I'm just not feeling it anymore. And then you came back. Yeah. Um, I think it's when I was first diagnosed with having lupus, I was yeah. so down and was so depressed. And the doctors told me I, could, I would never be able to work again. Your music career is over. You know, but, you know, the man upstairs had, had a whole other plan for me. Yeah. But at the time, you know, I, I was so distraught. And it was Babyface who came to me and said, Tony, it's not time. What are yeah. you doing? You can sing in a wheelchair. What are you doing? <laughs> so he kind of brought me out of that depression and we did an album together and won a Grammy. So I have so many wonderful friends and family surrounding me, which is great. I'm one of the lucky ones. Um, when, I, when there was a commercial break that you guys were showing a commercial with Kevin Hart, and Kevin Hart got a glimpse and heard about my sister Tracy, and he just sent this video saying, Tracy, I heard about what's going on. I'm here for you. I heard of one of your favorites. It was so beautiful. But I'm like, how did he find out? How did he know? And I just love him so much for doing that. So I have so many great people around me that's always hugged me yeah. when I need these great hugs. Well, that's because you give that in return. I mean, you can see it in everything that you do. You are one of those people. Every time, you know, I bring your name up to other celebrities even, they all talk about what a nice person you are and how sweet you okay. are. And I think that that's, and, and when times are tough, people want to give that yeah. back to you. And that's what Kevin yeah. Hart was doing for Tracy via you. Yes. <laughs> yes, he was so wonderful to do that. Oh, we love you.